The economy is falling off of a cliff and the only people who seem to know this is us. <laughs> only people who are saying, something ain't right. There are like 200 red flags and nobody seems to understand it but us. People watching this video, people subscribe to this channel, people who have previously watched my videos and it just seems mind boggling to me that you have a ton, a ton of pundits telling you guys, everything's okay, don't worry. But we're gonna jump into it guys. My name is Orlando, welcome to the channel. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. And look in the description and in the pinned comment, I have a newsletter that will give you tremendous this value I promise all you have to do is join it's free you cannot beat free why Americans dislike the economy why are vibes so bad as legions of commentators noting the disconnect between polling of the economy and top-level economic indicators unemployment rate is within spitting distance of 60-year lows and the measure of inflation has dropped from a punishing high 9% rate to a lower though still too high 3.2% now this seems like a, a slam dunk answer. <laughs> It's because a lot of these guys are not living in the real world. That's right, they're living in the metaverse. <laughs> the metaverse may be virtual, but the impact will be real. They are living in the metaverse, guys. Let me tell you this. When these guys come out and tell you, oh, everything's great. Oh, don't worry about it. Do you guys see the numbers? First of all, the numbers are lagging. The data is lagging. We know that. And... I know this, when I go to the grocery store and I'm paying more and more and more, no matter if the price goes up or the company does the magical shrinkflation where they basically knock down the size of the items that you have always bought year after year after year and for some odd reason, the box is getting smaller and smaller, you know that, or filling the bag with a bunch of air and there's only two chips in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that type of stuff, right? Doing the funny accounting and stuff like that. Yeah, when you are go out into the real world, these are things that are happening. When you go out and you try to buy a home and it's super unaffordable, when your wages have not moved, yet everything is skyrocketing up, it's gonna be a lot different than the numbers are showing on the paper. And that's what individuals are saying to me when they email me, when they DM me, when they say, Orlando, it's getting tough out here. And I say, yeah, I know, we saw this coming. The writing was on the wall. The major, major amount of money that was thrown into the economy me. Did you think there was no consequence for that? Yes, there is a consequence for that. Now we're getting to the end of the year where people don't have any money saved anymore. It's all gone. All the pandemic money, poof, it's gone. I'm all out of money. This low 60 year lows of unemployment rate, that's getting ate away guys. What are they trying to do when it comes to the economy talk? Well, it's pretty simple. They don't want you to panic. Daddy chill. What the hell is even that? They don't want you to put you in a predicament to where you start looking ahead. You start making choices saying, I have a plan A, B, C, D, E. They just want you to have no plan. I beg your pardon? No plan at all to do what's best for you and your family. You're gonna get caught by surprise. Surprise, when your company that you thought was so loyal to you that was that you thought, oh, I got 20 years in, I got seniority. Do you know how much blood, sweat, and tears I've given this company? And you think at the end of the day, they won't let go of you. That's what they want to do. They don't want you to look elsewhere. So let's continue on. Yet, citizens are unhappy with the economy. According to a New York Times poll, 81% of registered voters describe the condition of the economy as fair or poor. Only 19% call it good or excellent. Why is that? Why is that? Because these people are actually living in real life. Another poll conducted by the Financial Times and the University of Michigan found that a majority of voters said that they are worse off under President Biden than they were before. And then only 14% said that they were better off. Some commentators argue that the real wages are rising, but these claims are based on popular average hourly earnings measured by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, current employment statistics. Average hourly earnings is a less useful indicator now because of large workforce composition changes. During the pandemic, the economy shed large numbers of low paying service jobs, for instance, in leisure hospitality, which pushed the average wage of the economy higher. Guys, let me tell you this, <laughs> and I just talked about this. I am getting emails from individuals 
who actually worked, right? We're not talking about someone sitting in the ivory tower. We're not someone saying someone who's a quadruple millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> our trillionaire, billionaire, none of that stuff, right? We're not talking about any of those individuals. We're talking about hardworking people who are saying that it's getting tougher out here to make ends meet. Why is it getting tougher? Well, jobs are now requiring you to work more for the same. Wait, what? They tell you that, oh, we're gonna give you wage increase. We're gonna give you more money, but they're now asking, hey, um, we're paying you salary and we, at first we're okay with you working 40 hours a week, but we're gonna need you to kick it up to 50, 55 hours a week. What? Uh, but but let, let me explain the reason why. Um, because we did a big layoff and we got rid of almost everybody and you're the person left. So if you wanna keep your job, then you're gonna have to work more. So is that really you making more money when you have to work more for that money? Because the companies now that you thought were loyal to you got rid of everybody and now you have to do all of their work. I'm tired of all the pain I feel. So that's the reason why you're starting to see these accounting tricks <laughs> that you see from the labor department saying, oh yeah, yeah, wages did go up. They did but now you're doing more work. See how that works, how I broke that down so that you can understand that you're really getting the short end of the stick. Man, I'm tired of being right. And this is the reason why a lot of people are saying, well, Orlando, it just doesn't feel right. Something's going on with the economy. I just can't put my finger on it, but it feels a lot tougher than it did previously. It says, moreover, many Americans, the most salient life milestones are now out of reach. Spending caused a dramatic rise in treasury yield sending mortgage rates near 8%. Near? <laughs> uh, they're at 8%. <laughs> <laughs> Car loan interest rates are even higher. Consumers may be pleased that gas prices are down, but that's little comfort if they are putting off buying a home, having children, and other decisions commonly associated with pursuing the American dream. With unemployment still very low, most Americans who want a job have one, but they can't afford traditional life cycle accomplishments of owning a home and a car. Now, does that make sense? Okay, so now they're saying, okay, you got your job, but, we're laying off people, you work more. We increased your pay just a little bit, but you're doing more work. But you can't afford a home and you can't afford a car. Does that make sense? It's, it's trash. But I'm not gonna let you guys off the hook because you did have a chance to save the money. And a lot of you did it. <laughs> Even though I said you should if you want to buy your home, your car, or just in general, have a savings account. You need to have an emergency savings account. I'd say that over and over and over again, and I will not stop saying it. It is super important for you to have this. But a lot of you guys didn't save this and you went out and bought that BMW 7 Series, that Hellcat. You went on Cancun, to the Bahamas, Jamaica. You went on those trips. And now it puts you back in the worst case scenario. Because let me tell you what, previously before the pandemic, you may have been in an okay situation. Now that you have had a lifestyle creep, now that a lot of people believe that they deserve a certain lifestyle because of the money that was given to them by the government. Now you are spending credit card debt to live up to that lifestyle. You, sir, are an idiot. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Do not do this. Let me tell you what, guys, the credit card debt dilemma, it's not gonna end. Now we have a slew of people who want to continue to live a life that they can't afford, and they will continue to increase debt, 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 and more debt. Now the question is, is will those individuals be able to buy a home? I don't know. Everybody's situation is different, guys, but it's gonna get worse before it gets better. And this is the reason why videos like this are so important so that at least you will know. I don't want you to tell me. I don't want, I don't want to hear anybody say, Orlando didn't tell us, or I didn't hear, or I, I didn't know. <laughs> I don't want you to say, I didn't tell you or forewarn you. And then it says here, how could it all turn around? A massive jolt of productivity growth would solve many problems, boosting real wages, exerting downward pressure on prices. Unfortunately, given the wrath of new regulations that further hamper the supply side, that looks unlikely. And I would agree. It looks unlikely. Guys, get ready. 
we're gonna fall off of a cliff. No! And my point to you is, is for you to be ready for when we fall off that cliff, to be in a better position for you and your family, so that when this time comes, you'll be ready for it, you will understand. Look, I, I knew this was gonna happen. I'm gonna ride this wave out because there's gonna be a lot of foreclosures, there's gonna be a lot of repos, there's gonna be job losses, prices, in my opinion, will come down. But will you be able to afford any of those things if you're not prepared for it? We'll see. <laughs> I hope so. I hope you got value out of the content, but as always, you won't get all of your information from this one video. I need you to watch this video right here. It will give you information on the housing market, financial news, get it to your first rental property, and I promise you the information you will get from it will be gold. See you in the next one. Thanks.